everyone. It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. Some nut this morning wants to see this. It's one of the Toro recyclers that I got from Tips from Quinn. It's been sitting in my yard for about a week or so. And uh, I'm going to start it up and see if it starts up. And then go meet the guy and maybe sell it for $175. That's what I have it listed for. I'd be happy with 150 you know? As you can see, it surges kind of badly. I'm gonna bring it to the front, let it run for a little bit. Um, I did do a carb clean on this, but you know, sometimes the emulsion tube is slightly clogged and you weren't able to you know, completely get all the holes. The main jet might be slightly clogged. It's gonna cause some surging. So we'll go take a look at it. So I just brought it out to the front over here, started it up again let it run for about a minute or so and it didn't surge anymore so initial cold start you know what I'm saying it takes time for the uh, muffler temperature to reach an area where it'll push the choke flap completely open and then run right um, maybe it's got some ass gas in there but it doesn't surge anymore so you know just let it run for a little bit when it warms up the temperature it runs just fine Anyway, so since I'm going to be showing this to somebody later on, right, um, as you can see, it's been sitting in my yard for about a week, you know, with the rain, with my sprinklers going off, dust, dirt, whatever. It looks kind of yucky, so if you're going to show it to somebody, you can't have it looking like this, you know. Why not do something really quick? Um, this is the third product that I got from Super Clean for me to try out. And uh, as you know from the first one, I used the uh, foam aerosol can spray, the second bottle was the same foam spray, although it was in a spray bottle, not the aerosol. I like the foam aerosol can so far the best. The coverage on it was just even. Uh, the mist of the foam was just very universal and even, you know, good coverage. Uh, whereas the bottle spray, you'd have to quite a bit and it's globs and globs of foam, you know. Which isn't bad, but I just prefer the aerosol can better. This is just the uh, regular spray bottle, and it has the nozzles where you can do stream, off, or spray. So I'm just going to spray some of this on. So this takes care of grease, dirt, oil. Just going to let this percolate for a second and then do a wipe down. That's all it takes. So I let it percolate for about a minute or so. I moved the camera out of the way so I can get over here and wipe. Ooh, look. It's Freddy. Oh, he may not like it. Freddy is the snail, of course, or slug, whatever you want to call it. So um, this cleaner just allows you to easily just do one wipe and it's super clean. I guess the name's pretty fitting because it does get everything pretty clean, super clean, super fast. So that's all you really need to do, just a quick wipe down, you know. Why not? If this will convince somebody to buy it, it's worth the extra effort just to do a wipe down. So, so far I really like the super clean products. I especially like the foam aerosol spray. It's fantastic. So, uh, I'm gonna meet this guy later and uh, see if we can sell this Mamma Jamma, huh? Like I said, I got it for free, 
and uh, probably get uh, 150 bucks out of it, which would be great. As you can see, it doesn't surge anymore, but to the expert ear, not that I'm an expert, but you can kind of hear it's not completely smooth, you know? Uh, I'd like to just try something. While this is perfectly fine for me to sell today, I just want to try something to see if it works. Uh, I tried it before and it seemed like it worked, but then the following day it surged again. So. Uh, I tried this Seafoam GDI, Gasoline Direct Injection. It's designed for cars and throttle bodies and stuff like that to clean out the jets and, and all that. Um, but also on the back here, it also says directions for small engines too. Carburetor intakes, it does the same thing. So what you do is uh, you let it warm up a bit, which it has been warmed up already. You open up the uh, air filter area so you can see the throat of the carburetor. And then basically while the engine's running right, you would shoot um, some of the spray in bursts, you know, just before it stalls, you'd stop, you know what I mean? And then once you've done that a few times, maybe two to four ounces worth, right? What it does is it cleans out the carbon and also the uh, intake jets and stuff from any clogging, you know, uh, ethanol, gunk, you know, um, gel substances that might be clogging your jets, right? This is supposed to just vaporize all that stuff while it's running. So I'm gonna start it up. I'm gonna put a clamp onto the thing and watch my feet, of course. And then I'm just gonna do some bursts in here. Uh, this hose here, the straw, is designed to go into, you know, throttle bodies and uh, air intakes for cars, which is why it's bent. You know, you stick it in and it points the other direction. But I'm gonna get a regular straw so I can just spray it straight in there. And we'll do some bursts, just to see if it cleans out the jets a little bit more. Then let it soak for 10 minutes. So while I wait for that Toro recycler to percolate with that sea foam in there, right? Let it soak for about 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna start working on my 13.5 uh, Briggs flathead engine that I got a long time ago off of a Murray Select tractor that I got from my friend Brian, who got it from Jason over at Pet Taste Performance. Uh, I had valve issues. And if you guys recall from a previous episode, I uh, removed the valves and I grinded them down because over time these valves they expand and therefore you're, you're out of adjustment you know so uh, the only way to do that is to grind it down just a bit it was my first time grinding valves so I had over grinded them as a result um, it has no compression now because the valves open when they're not supposed to you know what I mean so uh, it actually ran for a while too you know 
but um, who knows why sometimes. Um, it's really difficult to remove valves from a flathead because you need a Briggs spring compression tool and that you compress the spring, give it some clearance so that you can magnetize, take a magnet and suck out the two keepers that hold it in place. It's even harder to put it back without tweezers, you know, so it's kind of a tough job. Um, and I've been putting this off for like a year, you know what I mean? But uh, I have a carcass, one remaining uh, lawn tractor without an engine that I got from Nick from Nick. It's been sitting in my garage for a long time. I got to get it out of there. So I'm going to start working on that tractor now, but I got to first straighten out this engine because I plan on putting this engine on there. The tractor's in tremendous disarray, so I didn't want to put a really good quality engine on there. I just wanted to put an engine on there to get it running, you know? Um, so I'm going to remove all the shrouds, air filter, air filter cover, the intake manifold, the carburetor and all that. Take the breather cover off so that I have access to the springs and the valves. I'm going to put you on time lapse because it takes a long, long time.
you guys saw from the lengthy time lapse. Took the whole thing apart, managed to take the old um, valves out, intake and exhaust, put the new ones in there. And uh, when I was taking the head off, I noticed that um, there was two bolts in here, right, that came out by hand loosening it. So uh, inside the engine block is stripped. You know what I'm saying? So when I put it all back again, right, there's, I mean, there's two head bolts that just wouldn't tighten anymore. So that has something to do with no compression either, you know, uh, also. So uh, I did find two other types of bolts that have almost the same uh, bolt pattern, but it was instead of a half inch, it was three eighths. But it, it drove in there okay. You know, the bottom one didn't so much because the bottom one was so stripped inside, you know? So unless you put a Healy coil in there or something like that, I think maybe that might have been the reason why this thing had no compression is because the thing is stripped inside. You couldn't secure the cylinder head onto the um, block so that there's no leakage, you know? So I think that, that basically has something to do with the compression. Maybe not so much the valves because I was checking the uh, compression stroke and the exhaust stroke and the valves, they seemed okay, you know? But I put the two new valves in there, you know, just give it a try just to see if this thing will run, you know? Uh, I doubt it, but uh, we'll see. I mean, we've got two new valves in there that have not been grinded down, right? And uh, as you saw, I did sort of a field um, sandpaper valve job, you know, but they, they don't turn under spring compression. So it should be okay, you know? Um, all we can do is just try, right? Uh, if this doesn't work, it just means that the head the head wasn't be, uh, is not able to be secured onto the engine block securely with compression because th there's two holes in there that are completely stripped to nothing. You know, you, you stick a, a bolt in there and it just loosely goes in and out. There's no threads in there anymore. So you're not gonna be able to adhere the cylinder head onto the engine block well enough for compression. So this engine block pretty much is done. <laughs> Uh, but we tried, we put, you know, I, I even put some Loctite in there to see if it works, but it won't even tighten, you know what I mean? But uh, like I said, I got two other types of bolts in there. I think it's sort of tight, not really, but sort of tight. But we got the two valves in there. Um, in my next episode, I'm going to put this 13.5 flathead engine onto that carcass of crap. And uh, we'll hook it up and see if this thing works. If not, I'll put another engine on there, right? Uh, it's raining now, so I don't know if I'm going to meet this guy anyway. But um, I'm going to start this up in a little while after it percolates some more um, when it stops raining. And we'll see if it runs better with that uh, GDI, Seafoam Gasoline Direct Injection. I wanted to mention one thing. Yesterday I did a review on Wonder Scrub, right? And I didn't give it a very good review because it requires water for you to, you know, lather it up and... and, and uh, wash your hands that way, right? Uh, I just, as you guys saw, my hands were filthy before from putting those valves in, right? So I decided to give it a try. I have uh, my gutter, it's raining outside, so the gutter water was trickling down water. So I just lathered up my hands with uh, the water and a little small squeeze of the Wonder Scrub and I lathered up very well under dripping water, you know what I'm saying? So continuous lathering with water, my hands are squeaky clean now. So I think basically this is designed for you to use it like a soap. If you have, um, if you're under a sink or something, instead of soap, you use Wonder Scrub, and the hands are very, very clean. I mean, super clean. You know, even the nails, surprisingly. So um, the directions are to use water. I didn't use that much water yesterday, which is why it didn't really work well. You know, but if you lather up under water, right, it works very well. So I just wanted to point that out because I didn't give it a very good review yesterday. But I think this works great, provided you have water supply to lather up like soap. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two,
paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye. <laughs>